This is your brain off emergency provisions. This is your brain on emergency provisions. Don't do it. All right, everyone, welcome back to By the Box, episode five. I said this in the last video and I'm gonna reiterate it. I explained what this series is about a lot more in depth in the first three episodes. So if you need more context, I would go watch those ones. But I'm getting tired of just categorizing cards by great, good, and okay. So I'm giving them some special names in honor of the cards that kind of pioneered those categories for me. So my new categories are going to be Gold Sphere instead of Great, Silver Wall instead of Good, and Bronze Weapon instead of OK. And I'm honoring the cards Sphere Karibo, Mirror Wall, and Fusion Weapon since they were some of the first cards I put in those respective categories. Isn't that cute? Alright, so in the Gold Sphere category, I have two cards for Crimson Kingdom, and the first one is Gozuki. Gozuki has the effect that during your main phase, you can send a zombie-type monster from your deck to the graveyard, and that effect is really good, and it's why it's played. It does have another effect where if it's sent to the graveyard, you can banish a zombie type monster from your graveyard except himself, and then you can special summon a zombie type monster from your hand. Both of its effects are a hard once per turn, and that second effect is situational, may come up, but it's really played for that first effect. The card sees a ton of play in Shiranui decks, and that's where it's seen the most historical play, and by extension, Mayakashi decks as well. Essentially any deck that can use Shiranui Spectral Sword, which can synchro summon from the graveyard, so that's absolutely where you want that card. And you could argue that in Shiranui Mayakashi and also Vampire decks where it sees play that use a Shiranui engine, it's the most valuable card. It should also be noted that a Shiranui engine is used in Vendred decks and they use this card as well. The card is really good, it's not as good as it used to be just because the decks that can utilize it to its full potential just aren't as powerful as they used to be. However, I do think it is a future-proofed card as well. Zombie archetypes have a thing with the grave yard usually, so this card will see play in any future zombie decks that are able to compete at a higher level. And next up in the Gold Sphere category, we have Ultimate Providence. This card is not restricted to a niche like Gozuki, it's just an absolute staple. It is a counter trap card, which means it's spell speed 3 and it cannot be responded to. And essentially, whenever an effect activates, you can discard a card from your hand that is the same type of card as the effect that that's being activated, so a monster effect, you would discard a monster, or a spell effect, you would discard a spell card, and then the activation of that card is negated, and then it's destroyed. And since this card can't be responded to, it's very good. Being able to negate the effect of a combo starter like Harpy Channeler, for example, or negating a spell card that could start a combo or maybe wipe out your field like Lightning Vortex. The card is almost always live, and it's just really good for what I feel like are obvious reasons. Reasons. Realistically, any deck could run this card. However, the ones that opt to run it are ones that can accommodate the discard cost, which normally is a pretty heavy restriction, and that is what balances this card. So like Blue Eyes decks, for example, make good use of it because they usually have discard fodder. The card is very good. It could be played in any deck, and it's one of those cards that if you have it, which it's a rare in the box, and it can be obtained through other ways, that should be noted. It can find its way into any deck that you're trying to build and you just don't have all the cards you need yet, but it is available in structure decks, so I'm just going to say this right now. While it is a great card in the box in the gold sphere category, I don't think it single-handedly makes this box worth going through when it's obtainable in easier ways. Now moving on to the silver wall category, which is the new for good cards, and we are going to start with Buster Blader, the Dragon Destroyer Swordsman. I don't think there's ever been a name of a Yu-Gi-Oh card that is so accurate to its effect other than this one. So essentially this card is just... Uh, the biggest dragon hair on the planet. So he can't attack directly, but he gains a thousand attack and defense for every dragon type monster your opponent controls or is in their graveyard. It also changes all of them to defense position and negates their effects. And even though he can't attack directly, he does inflict piercing battle damage. I'm going to bundle in a rare spell card with him, which is just Emblem of Dragon Destroyer, which allows you to add Buster Blader from your deck to your hand, which I guess you could maybe also bundle into this 
since he's one of the materials for the fusion monster. So this card is the boss monster of a rogue and niche kind of deck that's seen consistent play for years that basically relies on one combo that has a lot of cards that it's needed for its setup so it's never been super good but when it is set up it's kind of devastating. By using a card called Buster Whelp of the Destruction Swordsman, you can add any Destruction Sword card from your deck to your hand, which means you can add the Fusion spell card Destruction Swordsman Fusion. And essentially this allows you to get this card on the field with no problems. And then of course it seems extremely situational at first, you know, what if you're playing against a deck that doesn't have any dragon type monsters, and that's why this deck runs three copies of DNA Surgery almost every time. DNA Surgery allows you to declare any monster Type, and then all monsters on the field become that type. So you simply declare dragon and then your opponent's whole field is basically devastated. This is obviously held back by how inconsistent it is and how much setup it needs, but I'm willing to call it a good card, a silver wall card, because once again, when it is set up, it is devastating. Next up in Silver Wall, we have Demise the Land. Demise the Land has the effect that when your opponent special summons a monster, you can select and activate any field spell from your deck. This is on a quick play spell card, so you can use it on your opponent's turn. In one of my last Buy the Box episodes, I mentioned that Planet Pathfinder is kind of the best thing that we have next to Terraforming and Metaverse for a card that can directly search out a field spell. And I said that because I totally forgot Demise of the Land even exists. It's debatable which one's better, but after really looking at them both, I actually do think Demise of the Land is a little bit better. It is more situational, of course, but at least it doesn't take up your normal summon. It is a good card, but it is held back a little bit by, you know, not being able to be run in every single deck. And like I said with Planet Pathfinder, I think we are very far away from terraforming and metaverse, so, you know, Demise of the Land is kind of actually the best we got over Planet Pathfinder. And moving on to the Bronze Weapon category, what used to be the OK category, and I really only have one, and that's the Warrior Returning Alive. The Warrior Returning Alive is really simple, it just lets you add a warrior type monster from your graveyard to your hand. What sets this apart from a card like Reinforcements of the Army, which isn't in Duel Links and is limited to one in the TCG because of how good it is, is that this card needs a lot more set up since the card has to be in the graveyard in one way or another and reinforcements of the army on the other hand can just search it directly out of the deck which is where cards start during the duel so that's kind of the biggest issue with the card it's just too slow but it is a good effect it sees play in some hero decks some synchro toolbox deck so the, the card's decent for sure overall the box is kind of meh but the the caveat here is if you're trying to build a sheer Nui deck you kind to have to go through it to get Gozuki and that kind of sucks honestly because in the grander scheme of things it's really not that good especially when ultimate provenance can be obtained in other ways so I'm actually kind of hoping for a reprint of Gozuki because honestly having to go through this box to get him to build what are competent rogue decks is kind of nonsense and I am going to briefly talk about the only card that's limited in the box and that's give and take so you can special summon a monster from your graveyard to your opponent's side of the field and then you get to increase the level of a monster you control by the level of the monster you special summoned and that only lasts till the end phase. This card is limited to one because of Ra's Disciple. Ra's Disciple is a card whose intended use is to make the god monsters easier to summon but it does have the effect that you cannot special summon monsters. So if you were to dump this card in the graveyard with something like Neos Fusion for example and then use this card to special summon it to your opponent's side of the field then you can just completely lock them down and probably win from that so in order to nerf the consistency of this this card is at one and that's why I'm not going to be putting it into any category because I don't think it really fits but I did want to talk about it since it's limited and it used to be broken who the mini box for this episode we have dawn of destiny the poster boy is one of my favorite cards of all time sacred phoenix of Nephis, and yeah, he could go down as an honorable mention, but I can't really justify him even being decent at this point. He could see play in Fire King and some other decks, but he's just not the most optimal choice. And I just kind of want to get something out of the way. Fire King Island is a good card. 
but I'm not going to talk about it because it's available in other ways and those are the ways you absolutely should take when building a Fire King deck. So I'm just not even going to talk about it as it pertains to the box because it doesn't add any value or any reason to go through the box. It's kind of the same as Ultimate Providence and Crimson Kingdom in that regard. So in Gold Sphere category, I, you know, I, I don't think so. <laughs> it's just these mini boxes, man. There's, there's just never really anything like it. So, moving on to Silver Wall, we have Super Rush Headlong, which used to be a pretty common staple. It's a quick play spell card that essentially gives any monster you control the Ally of Justice Cataster effect, where if it battles a monster with a certain attribute that you declare, it'll destroy it at the start of the damage step. You can probably see why in the early days of Duel Links this card was pretty good at a lower power level. These days it's not as good, but it's another one of those cards like Ultimate Providence that if you're trying to build a deck and you're missing some cards, it can be a decent tech. Another thing to note about this is it does get over monsters that cannot be targeted by card effects, like Lunalite Sabre Dancer for example. So overall I'd say it's a good card, it's pretty versatile, uh, it being a quick play spell card you can also use it on your opponent's turn and it's not when your monster attacks, it's just when it battles. So if your opponent declares an attack on you, you you could also chain it to the attack, which is pretty nice. And moving down to the bronze weapon category, the formerly okay category, uh, tribute to the doom, discard a card, target a monster in the field, destroy it. Extremely simple effect. So like ultimate providence, it's just, you know, a lot of decks can't and don't want to accommodate the discard cost. Destroying a monster is good, but at this point the card has been power crept very hard by Smashing Ground and Hammer Shot and Fissure and a lot of cards. But the effect is still pretty good, especially if you can accommodate the discard cost and maybe even make advantage from it too. And that's the only situation where I could see it taking priority over something like Smashing Ground. But this is another one of those on the brink cards. Uh, you know, I might be a little biased because it's a classic card and and I like it, but I do think its effect is good. So even though it's been power crap, I'm okay with calling it a bronze weapon card. And yeah, man, I, yeah, that's really about it. I mean, card of the soul is kind of interesting sometimes. Uh, and then there's other Fire King support, but the same thing with Fire King Island. It's it's not worth talking about. Um, the Dark Hex Sealed Fusion is an interesting card as well. It has a King of the Swamp like effect, but. I don't really think it's good enough, it's it's too situational for me to really give it its own segment. And I said in one of my previous Buy the Box episodes that uh, one of the mini boxes I talked about was easily the worst, but I kind of take that back, I actually think this is the worst box in the game. And the reason for that is because the only cards that are kind of, you know, worth a damn in it are obtainable in other ways. Super Rush Headlong, which is, in my opinion, easily the best card in the box, is available in a bundle deal. And as I mentioned, the Fire King support is available in a few different ways. Overall, I mean, I, I think this is the box that kind of deserves the least attention in the whole game. And not to mention, some of its super rare are just laughable like Mirage Knight is debatably one of the worst effect monsters in the history of the game and he's a super rare so I don't know it's it's bad it's bad don't buy the box all right that's gonna do it for episode five I still really enjoy making this series uh, so the next time we're doing it we're going over electric overload which is one I'm very excited to talk about and echoes of silence so I thank you for watching I will see you in the next episode of this series and uh, you know uh, free car curry it, it, it's about time like uh, like how are you gonna nerf a deck that like finally got a chance to shine in the spot